Ooh, it feels really good to be back. And when I say back, I mean back with yet another list to go over. Because again, y'all know I love, 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 love my list. And this one also came from BR Gridiron. Because I was just scrolling on Instagram, just chilling, going through some stuff, looking at stories and whatnot, looking at different posts. And BR Gridiron popped up. And it said, hey, Engraving, we got another list for you featuring one of your guys. So I was like, okay, you know what? Let's talk about it. And this was the best candidates to make their first Pro Bowl. Now, that list is led by the Cincinnati Bengals, their quarterback, Joseph Burrow. And Joe Burrow, he, he got everything he needs uh, to make a Pro Bowl. Uh, he got everything he needs to actually make more than a Pro Bowl. Uh, so, yeah, him being on that list is absolutely no surprise. The weapons that they got at the wide receiver position, them adding a Hayden Hurst, replacing C.J. Uzama, and replacing him with Hayden Hurst, that's an upgrade. So him being on the list, no shocker at all. Um, Amani Oruwarie from the cornerback from the Lions. I'm, I don't know anything about him. I, I, I don't know anything about his game whatsoever. Um, Devondre Campbell from the Packers. Oh, I, I thought he made the Pro Bowl last year. I know he's somebody that uh, re-signed with the Packers, and uh, he was an underrated guy uh, at inside linebacker, and he, he definitely made a mark for them last year. Um, Jordan Poyer, safety from the Bills. Hey, I, I can see that one too. Um, Bills, they got a really, really nice secondary. Uh, and last year, even without Tredavious Swat, hopefully he stays healthy the whole year this year, uh, but even without him, they still made their mark. So um, they'll, of course, be looking to continue that. Now, A.J. Terrell, that's a really good one. And that was probably my second favorite uh, on this list. Actually, maybe the first favorite to make a Pro Bowl on this list. And I'll explain to you why, because I know some of y'all probably don't understand why he would be my first favorite pick to make the Pro Bowl. Um, but yeah, A.J. Terrell, I think with him, for the longest. Now, recently, he's been getting a lot more respect. Um, before a while, when people would talk about the lockdown corners and whatnot, they wouldn't really mention his name. Um, and I could see that because he was on the Falcons. He's on a team that just wasn't really good and haven't been really good for a long time. Uh, so he can get, when you're on a bad team, even though you're a good player, a good player on a bad team often gets overlooked. Um, so I could see that. But now he's been getting a lot more respect recently. Uh, and then Antonio Gibson. Running back from the Commanders. Ravens know about him from a couple years ago. Um, so, yeah, he's a shifty guy, quick guy. They, they will use him a lot in the screen game. Uh, so, yeah, he, he figures to be very involved uh, with the – oof, I almost called them their old name – with the Washington Commanders, their game plan. Uh, and Carson Wentz should be dumping it off to him a lot. Now, that leads us to the Baltimore Raven that made this list of top candidates – uh, to make their first Pro Bowl. And the reason that I said A.J. Terrell, he would be my favorite one uh, on this list to make the Pro, Pro Bowl over Adafi Away is because I don't even want Adafi Away playing in the Pro Bowl. I don't want to see no Ravens in no Pro Bowl at all. I don't want to see that, man. I want to see them in the Super Bowl. Will they get there? We'll see. Hopefully they do. But Adafi Away... Um, he is the one that BR Gridiron picked uh, as a candidate for the Ravens, most likely to make the Pro Bowl. And his rookie season last year, um, it was it was strong. He had some very very strong moments. I think probably his strongest moment uh, it came his strongest moments it came in that Chiefs game. Ooh man, I just I remember going into that game thinking we are about to get blown out this game is gonna get ugly because with our starters against the Chiefs in past games it's gotten ugly so now we 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 are missing so many people we missing so many people and I was like oh my goodness this this is gonna be nasty I was like I'm gonna watch of course I'm gonna watch because I don't care if I, if I think a game is gonna be a blowout either way if, if I think Ravens about to get dog walked I'm gonna still watch but my expectations may be a little bit lower. Even though I still obviously wanted them to win, 
but they came through. But a Dafe away in that game. I think he had uh didn't he have a deflection that led to an interception? Of course, remember the, the big play at the very end of the game. But I, I I'm pretty sure no, it, it it wasn't a deflection that led to an interception. I think it was a where he rushed Patrick Mahomes and hit him, and that led to an interception. It was something that Adafi Away did in that game that led to an interception. Um, but it was that, but then of course, at the very end of the game, where the uh the fumble, with the the for, not only the forced fumble, but the forced fumble and the recovery too. I'm like, okay, fair way, this rookie, this rookie. I remember um, in one of Justin Houston in one of his first uh, interviews um, as a Raven. I think it was last year during training camp. But he was like, man, or maybe it was early this offseason. I, I don't remember, but anyway, um, he was talking about <clears throat> how his son, like a fair way, is like a one of those created Madden players because he just see he's like big, he's tall, he's fast, he's like everything all in one. And what we want to see from him this year is just him continuing to put everything together. Now, I think something that can definitely help him big time, two things. One thing is the scheme. Now, I didn't even realize last year, looking at his stats, he had five, five sacks last year. I didn't realize that. I do not even remember from whichever games they were from. But that's a good start. Now, I do remember, though, um, I remember his, his season being kind of like up and down to where it was like, oh, you see Adafi away, he, he bringing some pressure, and then sometimes he'll be a little quiet. And I know um, Adafi away, he did demand respect, though. He started demanding respect early and often because teams started double teaming him. They were like, oh, we, we saw what you did. We've been seeing what you've been doing. Oh, uh, no, nah, we ain't going for that double team. Let these other guys be one-on-one. -on -one. So um, one thing that I think will really help him uh, is the scheme. With Wink's scheme, uh, he would bring pressure, but he would bring it from so many different places. A lot of times it wouldn't even get there, but he would bring it from so many different places um, to where pass rushers, they weren't just pass rushers. And not that if a pass rusher just strictly has to be a pass rusher and they can't ever do anything else. But I, I always I felt like it just didn't allow pass rushers to do what they do best. And again, not saying they can't have different traits, not saying they can't do different things. They can't expand their game. No, not saying that. But with pass rushers like Yannick and Gagwe, it did not allow them to just get into a rhythm because they were either coming off the field, bringing somebody else on for a fresh body uh, or they were asked to drop back. And coverage and whatnot, and as a pass rusher, you you want to eat, man. You want to eat. It's it's like uh, I, I don't I don't understand when when people get upset when wide receivers they get upset for not catching the ball for not having passes on their way. Their job is to catch passes. A uh, a uh, uh, pass rusher's job is to rush the passer. So rush the passer, and to stop the run and all that too. But your job is to rush the passer. Generate pressure, generate sex, generate heat on that quarterback. So if you can get into more of a rhythm, then the, the better for you. And again, Yannick Ngakwe, it always stuck to me how he broke it down because he said well, as a pass rusher, you want to get into a rhythm and you, you want to actually you, you want to study your opponent during the game. You want to study your opponent's tendencies during the game so you can be like, all right, well, I try to do the swim move on him. It, it's not working, but when I do the bull rush, oh, yeah, it gets him every time. Or the, depending on how I move my feet, depending on what kind of angle I take, he going to think I'm doing one thing, but and I've been doing that thing for the first couple of quarters, but I'm going to hit him with something different to catch him off guard. But see, if, if you do that, you're trying to make adjustments to your game, but it, 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 if you can't do that if you're not out there on the field or you're dropping back, or it, you, it, you just can't do it. So hopefully with Mike McDonald's scheme, it will really allow a Dafir way to eat. You see what it did for Aiden Hutchinson. You see what it did for David Ajabo. Like that. Like that. And not that college is the pros because it's not. We get that. But still, we just would love for Ravens pass rushers to be Ravens pass rushers. Now, um, that's one thing that I think can help him. I said there would be two things. The second thing is somebody of significance opposite him. Now, we know Tyus Bowser. 
And he was coming on strong last year. Probably his best season of his career. Then he got the Achilles injury at the end of the year. Now, it is expected that he's back week one. Um, and hopefully he is back week one. And he's fully healthy. Because that's the most important thing. If he ain't back week one, I got no problem with it if he's not fully healthy. But if he's fully healthy, let's get it. Um, but also opposite him, Ajabo, Achilles, he ain't going to be ready week one. It's not expected. Again, I've been saying it all year, any, well, all offseason. Anything you get out of David Ajabo, it's a bonus this year. It's a bonus. It is a bonus. I know a lot of people have been talking about, oh, yeah, November, December, he'll be back. And he could be. But even then, how will he be in football shape? He got to get acclimated to the NFL. It's just... It's expected to take some time. So this is essentially a red shirt year for David Ajabo. So we'll, we'll see what happens, though. Because, uh, again, with technology and medicine these days, and you know, recovery times can be crazy in a good way. Um, but, yeah, and it's expected that they bring back Justin Houston. They could resend the tender if they chose to. Um, but if they went in another direction... Uh, but we'll see We'll see But it's very important that Somebody opposite him Really command respect Because if Excuse me If Adafi away If he's being double teamed Even sometimes triple teamed Alright Somebody else gets to eat there Somebody else gotta step up there And then this is why It's very important to just have as much guys being able to generate pressure as you possibly can. Not just on the edge either, but on the interior as well. You're going to have your Calais Campbell. You're going to have your Travis. Jo Hopefully he could do it. You're going to have your Justin Matabic. Hopefully he could do it too. Hopefully all of them boys could to really step up and really push that pocket, man. Because it, it's, it's, it'll be so important just... Not only for Adafi away, but just for the defense as a whole. Because what it'll do, it'll make everybody else's job easier. So while this list is cool, yeah, it's nice. Oh, yeah, Adafi away could make his first Pro Bowl. <coughs> yeah, that'd be nice. But I no, we don't want him making no Pro Bowl. We want him being in a different type of bowl. We out.